guys good morning and welcome to my channel my name is violet to color chap how are we all doing i know we are all fine today we are going to be doing something a bit different we are going to be talking about experience with all skiers up so guys get ready to watch and you know ask any questions you feel like asking and i'll always be there to answer your questions so guys we have a special guest in the house a special guest who's going to tell us about our experience with all ski exam. So, guys, let's put our hands together as we welcome Miss Amina Kwasi. Amina, you're welcome. Please come sit close to me. Thank you so much, Amina, for coming online. I truly appreciate this. So, Amina, could you introduce yourself, please? Hello, my name is Amina. Uh, I'm a nurse, obviously. Okay, so Amina, what unit or department do you work? I am working in. This surgery world. Oh, so Amina is bringing a lot of love from this surgery world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Amina, I just want to ask you some few questions. What's your experience with writing OSCE exams? Well, generally, the OSCE exam wasn't uh, so tough and it wasn't a ride in the park. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it wasn't so much different from the practicals we were kind of used to at home. Of course, there's okay. structural differences. Just like trying to learn what is specific to this place and all. Yeah. So it wasn't bad. On the general, it is quite simple, but you need to know what you need to know. That's you know, that's it. You need true. to prepare. Yeah. But can you say the much you prepare that tells how your success story will be in terms of writing the old scale exams? Yes. Yes. Preparation has a lot of things to do with passing right. your scale exam because. Okay. If you don't know what you're going into the exam hall to do, you definitely are going to miss it. But when you are prepared, you have gone through possible questions, likely scenarios, gone through stages of the exam, practice all the procedures that is likely to be asked. Yes, then you're going to have the kind of confidence that is needed to pass the exam. Okay, um, a lot of people say I prepared very well for this OSCE exam, and you know, when I got my results, it wasn't palatable, it wasn't something I was expecting. Was that the same case you had? Well, <laughs> for me, it was, it was quite different. Okay, I think Violet has not mentioned that the reason why we're doing this exam, um, this video is because it's for people that might find themselves wanting to write, having to write OSCE the second, the second time. Because I did write mine the second time. But in my case, after the exam, everybody had to me like, how was it? And I was just like, it was fine. It's fine. And I had to talk with a colleague who had the same scenario with me. So that the is when you scenario. finish the exams, yeah. you are going back and you had like an interaction with yeah, people who yeah, had the same on, on, on my way back to, okay. to, to the trust. And so um, she was quite sad that she gave a wrong medication. And I was just like trying to console her. She gave a wrong dose of a particular medication. I was trying to console her and all of that. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to be the good girl, holding her hand, <laughs> patting her back, squeezing her hand, and all of that. And then we got talking about how many drugs she gave. And then she said she gave two. And I'm like, what? I gave three. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then, okay. What did you give? And I said Ramipri. I said yes, I gave Ramipri. Yeah. Carbon, calcium, calcium carbonate. carbonate. I said yes, I gave that. And I said amoxicillin. She said no, patient is allergic to penicillin. Oh and I just god. went, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I have failed. Like I knew just like right there, right there. The same day I finished the exam, about less than a half. I knew I just. I have just filled it. So you didn't even need your results to come before you knew no, you already no, no. had issues. By the time the results that. came out, I'd already finished money. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you, my love. So, I mean, now, will you say it's natural to mourn when you have issues with your exam? You know, because for me, I don't see failure to be a very big deal. And that's because when I was preparing to come over to the UK, I happened to do an IELTS exam that I failed woefully. You know, I prepared for that exam so well reading session everything i was like top notch and you know i was well dressed for that exam my hobby was like what does dressing have to do with this exam and because of the confidence i had in my preparations i wore the best hair and you know i was bouncing to the exam and when the results came out that i had a band of 6.5 in fact i i, I couldn't mourn <laughs> so would you say it's natural to mourn when you fail an exam especially like in this scenario when you fail yeah, an exam yeah. well actually it's it's just like 
kind of a natural human reaction when something not palatable, something you don't actually want to happen happens. happens. Yeah. So it's just normal uh, for me. I'm not like failing the exam is not new to me. <laughs> I failed my higher tiers once, and um, while in school of nursing, I failed quite a couple of exams. <laughs> so, so it was not like a if it Yeah, was. it was so, and I, I, I still felt so bad. I felt bad enough that. I couldn't eat. I landed myself in accident and emergency <laughs> oh, bless for you guys. You. I landed myself in A &E and it was really terrible. So it, it could even be more sore for someone who has been like who has never failed. Exactly. And it could happen to anybody, yes. I tell you. It could. Because I I I prepared with this guru that's been teaching you whole Oski. We had our preparations together in groups, myself. Valence, tricks and Francis and we used practically all our weekends to practice. That's right. All of our weekends. So it wasn't like I didn't study and we didn't prepare. Even when I was feeling bad, my mom had to tell me that stop feeling bad because obviously you didn't feel because you're a dumb idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be honest, failure is part of life. Yeah. While I was preparing for my IELTS as a mommy now, I met a lady and she obviously said to me, I've written IELTS for the 13th time. I said, oh my God, I don't want to mention her name. For the 13th time. It's not like she wasn't... Oh, she so was, strong. Yeah, she is. It's not like she was failing everything. It's just that some parts she will get bad nine and the other part she's going to get a bad six. So that was just the issue she had. And she kept on writing it for the... And she never came for. So guys, it's okay to mourn. So, I mean, after the morning stage, with your experience, how do you pick up? How do you bounce back to make sure by the second time I'm going back for Oski exam, I'm going to give it a full shot and that's the end? Okay, it was... Um... Seriously, I'm not going to lie. I had a lot of support. <laughs> I had like full circle of support system all the while because I'm like I'm I have ulcer and then that was like basically the thing that landed me in and E because I couldn't eat and all of that. So these guys, this girl and Trace and Francis, they were like practically forcing me to eat, buying me stuff, cooking for me. So like. In a little while, I got out of it, and you know what? I just had to deal with it because it has already happened. And then it is even more sad because it was just me within my study group that didn't make the exam. So it was yeah. just, it's not something that is easy to, to take in. Yeah, but then I just had to come to a reconciliation that this thing has happened, and what I need to do is, you know, find a solution to it. Yes. So I, I went ahead. With my OSCE pack, I printed plain um, implementation handouts. Yeah, and because I could still remember Your all questions. of all of the so you get same questions. Every single ones, yeah. So okay. when you go back, you get the same question. Perfect. So because I could still remember every single of the medications, so I I, I I fill that out, make some of my friends like check the time, be my examiner, yeah. and then. I carry multitude of similitude yeah. <laughs> practicals, you know, and then you're good that now. Was just it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm um, back in there, wrote you... it again and bounce back. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. So Amina, could you tell us why some people fail to share with their friends or rather that they fail or skills? And because some people they don't just want anybody to know. Would you say it's denial? Because some people, even when their result is out, they say, like, I didn't make this mistake. If only I could get my script, I can't this mistake is it possible you know yeah. what do you have to say about that well i would say like before the exam even like while we were in the waiting room if someone had come to me and said babe you are going to miss an allergy <laughs> <laughs> i'll probably shoot the person like get, yeah. get out of here because apparently i got to the patient and i was like What's your name? Told me their name. I was like, oh, do you have any allergies? Said yes. penicillin and peanuts. And I'm like, okay, don't worry. We'll make sure we don't give you anything that has penicillin and anything that has peanuts in the hospital. I said, okay. And then I got onto the drug chart and the first drug was amoxicillin and I still went ahead to give. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, there were so many clues because by the time I got to the calcium gluconate, on the calcium gluconate, it says this calcium gluconate was not made with anything that has peanuts. You know, okay. it's like an eight for me so to get that. Yeah, but I still did 
didn't get it. No, I didn't. Bless you. It I was still... destined. God wanted you to write yeah. this down a second time and probably do it. I, talk I, I still to didn't get it. So I, I went ahead, gave the medication and all of that. So there is no, there is like. Of course, we, we all know that there are stages of grief, yeah, hunger, beginning, depression, and yeah. acceptance. Yeah. So while you, it is normal to be at the dynasty because the, the immediately I realized that five days down, yeah. I was still like kind of hoping that maybe I was dreaming or yeah, like kind of you know, <laughs> something should happen. It is okay to Mom. go through the denial stage, but don't don't. Swim in it. That's don't it. don't get drowned in it. Yeah. Like just try to like get up. It might be very difficult and all of that. Yeah. Nobody is be above any kind of mistake. That's right. Nobody. No. Regardless, even if you've been like a top A student yeah. all through your life. I mean, I'm sorry to call to you. I met yeah. someone who shared with me her experience. She said to me, Violet, I've never, never failed in my life. So <laughs> why we are preparing for this all scares? And it was like, what is that? You know, it's so simple. <laughs> And you know, when the result came out, she failed. And when she was sharing with me, I said, God wants you to fail. You know, obviously, yeah. you've never failed before, you and you just have to test it now. Lessons, you know? Yeah. Because as I am, I, I'll say I've failed on various degrees, and I can tell you, I know for myself that I'm not dumb. And people that no, know to be me, honest, you are not dumb. dumb. <laughs> some, I've met in my lifetime, and that is the truth. Yeah. You are skillful in what you do. So, what I just believe is. All of the world it's just like giving me an edge i could talk to someone that is failing you know yeah and give them from my and the person will listen because, them them because i have experienced it that's myself. right so i mean do you think confidence has a role to play in your skills um? yeah very well you you have you know when you practice enough that's when you're going to have the confidence that's needed that's confidence right. is very needed but yeah. then you have to be able to balance okay. between being confident and, overconfident. and being overconfident. That's right. you, know, you have to be confident to do the exam, but okay. you shouldn't be overconfident because yeah. you sometimes being overconfident makes you absent in the exam. That's right. You That's just right. like do what you like. No, and you then think, yeah, you have to say it's good. Like, my pain ready. This kind of small thing can fail me because yeah. during my implementation, I still had some minutes left. And I could, like, I had the time to go, go back, back and all of that. You know, but your I didn't see it because I wasn't present, you know. That's and nice. then, so you have to be confident, but you have to be able to strike a balance between being confident and being confident. Kai, so well, in fact, I, I'm even learning a lot from Amina <laughs> today. I can <laughs> attest to that. Um, Amina, can I just quickly say something to you? What are the common errors people get it wrong in all skills? Um, okay. You know, can, the little errors people get it wrong. Yeah, well, because. I feel the implementation. I'm going to start from there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one major thing I heard, like one thing I have heard before I went for the exam, was that the number of cups, the, the number of pots of medication pots you have, is likely the number of medication you're going to be given. So that day I saw three medication pots. So you are June, yes. Yes. In my mind, it was cups. like all these things are coming to pass. But it doesn't matter. If they put five it. medications, you might be serving just one. Yeah. If they put three medication pots, you might be serving two. Yeah. If they it has put nothing to do with the three numbers. medication pots, you might be serving four medications. So the number of medications you're going to serve has absolutely nothing to do with the number of medication pots you you're giving. Going to give. Also, another thing that happened was the first drug on my chart was paracetamol. Okay. And it was like giving about three hours before so yeah. apparently i know i'm not going to give you know yeah but lots of people make that mistake yeah people I, people make that kind of mistake so when you count your paracetamol hours say they give at 11 yeah a.m so you're going to the secret to counting is you're counting from 12 yes from 12 because from 11 a.m to 12 a.m is just one hour yeah if you count from 11 there you is no 12. hour yeah so 12 a.m 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and 3 and then 3 p.m. is Perfect. when you are supposed to give the medication. Yeah. So that's just that. that. The and also, do not think that because you have a trap, because my my paracetamol was not due. Yeah, it was like a trap. Yeah, it was a trap, and I was able to like figure Pass that out. Trap. And I'm like, yeah, I got oh, there. <laughs> but there was another one waiting. You yeah. know. So don't think because there is a trap initially and you've you cleared that trap you you can't like 
get another a trap, trap yeah. along the way so there could be two or three traps in a single question yeah. always look out be present in your exams and read through yeah also uh, another very common mistake is during assessment and during planning yeah in assessment stage you you most likely are getting a scenario whereby the patient is just coming into the hospital yeah you know like the patient is just the coming into the facility yeah, and then you're assessing but when you get to planning stage Care sometimes charge. they've given like a certain kind of care maybe they've done the operation and they want you to plan for yes. post-op or maybe they've like now come to the patients the patients that came in with shortness of breath does not have shortness of breath anymore. anymore but the patient is not in pain yeah so always read the read. question prompt read your read planning instructions the planning because most times they are changed they are changed and so if you don't look at it you're going to plan for what you have in assessment, assessment. which is not a current need and that would patient. definitely be a fail yeah. because i mean i know some people say i had ccf in my assessment and obviously in the planning i didn't read anymore and i was to plan for any of that and i <laughs> doubt yeah. back to you know so you have to be able to read your planning very well and be able to differentiate always, read, always read don't assume always always read wow i mean i Thanks and so much. Oh, sorry, I'm okay. just going to add. And the writing, don't forget to like sign. Signing, signing oh. even fails people. Signing, That's like right. come on, signing. You go back to go. <laughs> You're going to go back to sign. <laughs> you go back to sign. Like crazy, 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 crazy things. Just oh, because you forgot to sign your yes. name. So, and then generally for the procedure stations, if you're doing anything, and you realize you've done something wrong verbalize. during or after the procedure and you still have time left verbalize yeah say examiner i have done this yeah what do i need to do Lots sometimes of some of them will say continue as you would in clinical setting yeah you, so know, you have to verbalize yeah some of them will say imagine you have not done the error continue so the fact that you have yes the fact that you have verbalized it yeah it's honorated but don't say you remember very late and then you you, you don't to want to verbalize to the end no yeah. as long as you are still within time yeah you're still in the exam any or, errors verbalize, verbalize it, it and let it be in the hands of the word examiner i mean now one final question i want you to treat here a lot of people say if you are going to us for oh i'm done i'm finished but it's easier it's not something it's easier it's us like that's a big lie i mean i just want you to it you know say big, something about big, it fat misconception yeah it's big, same market scale big and fat misconception you know of course i wouldn't lie everything is with god yes that's every correct. single thing as a believer i believe everything is, is with god. god yeah that's so right. whatever thing that will happen to you wherever place you go oh, will definitely happen, happen. <laughs> <laughs> so but the fact that some people are easy somewhere some people are tough somewhere is a misconception it's a misconception they use the same marking skin they use the same everything and Whatever I think that will happen is what will happen. So guys, prepare for your OSCE exam and make sure to get a pass. So I mean, your advice generally to nurses, you know, about to take this exam because this video is not for just those who have failed the exam. It's also for those who are preparing to write just so you don't make similar mistakes. So what's your advice generally to nurses who are preparing to come to the UK, who wants to undergo this OSCE exam? My advice is that you have to study. <laughs> study, 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 and don't be a loner. Yeah, I won't lie to you. It is not easy to read alone for Oski. Yeah, you have to find someone to practice with. If you can't get anybody, well, get your pillow. Get your pillow. Get your I pillow. Did that. We did that a lot. We did it. Like, so get your pillow. Talk to your pillow. Get your oranges and start giving them high hem injections. Of course, your table head becomes your wound. That's right. And you start dressing them. Practice, so you practice. Can't, you can't practice OSCE in your head. Yeah, that's you know, right. Like you can know the things to say, but you have to like put yourself Perform in the it. scenario. Doing it. You have to put yourself in this scenario. And generally, the OSCE exam is not helpful. It it's is not no, hard. It's not. I know you, you keep hearing this and you keep wondering what are people feeling. It is not helpful. It is not hard. Yeah. And people fail because of the most simplest and reasons. Honestly. Like sa signature. <laughs> you know, like not writing A. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it is, it is not terrible. And especially if you are coming from Nigeria. Oh, all the way, all the way from Nigeria. Oh, yeah. And especially if you are trained in my alma mater. Oh. Room. <laughs> Nah, uh, but now I'm jealous. <laughs> so it is, wow. it is. It is not. It is 
not like an awful exam. It's something that like is at once once you study for it. Amina, thank you so yes. much for coming. In fact, it's been exciting with Amina. So yes. Amina, we're so grateful for bringing yourself out to tell us about your experience, yes. and we do appreciate it. And we hope very soon we're going to hear you in Band Eight Nos. <laughs> Guys, Amina has a channel. Please go show us some love in the channel. Yes. And thank you all guys for watching Oski exam like we keep saying is so simple Oski exam is so simple so guys thanks for watching endeavor to prepare for your Oski exam if you have any question pop it up so you can search for Amina on our channel name Amina Kwasin so guys thanks for watching I'll see you in my next video and until then keep passing your Oski exam bye guys we are not going yet we're going to drop the link to my channel in the description <laughs> below <laughs> All if right, you are guys. interested in anything I do, I'm going to be, I'm just starting off, I'm going to be going into some cooking, nursing thoughts and all of that. Just make sure you subscribe and follow me. Thank you.